hello you're welcome back to my channel so today we'll be looking at a dartless pencil gown i'll be making a lot of style from this pattern so i thought to drop it first first off i'm getting my shoulder line and labeling it and then i'll create my neckline first of three inches width and three inches depth using the cuff part of my pattern master i'll connect this dot my neck width to my neck depth and then I'll go back to my shoulder line and place a half of my shoulder measurement. At the point of the half of my shoulder measurement, I'm going down with one inch and I'll connect that to my neck width and that will be my shoulder slope. At my shoulder slant, I'm placing a half of my shoulder measurement again, getting the midpoint of that. I will then use my ruler to connect my shoulder slant to my chest line and extend my chest line outwards horizontally at the midpoint of that distance i'm going with inwards with half inch and i will use my pattern master to connect my chest line to my shoulder slope using the cuff part of it so for the vertical dimensions i like to use my back half length whenever i'm working with a dress i'll mark my hip line my knee line the length of the dress and then i will include the seam allowance i like to include all the allowances that i want on my pattern first but you can choose to do it without adding the same allowance okay whatever works for you so i'm drawing out the lines as an indication of this lines okay that's my length and my knee line my hip line and my half length so now i will place the horizontal dimensions of my of my measurements Labeling the lines that I have the chest line, waist line, hip line, the knee line, and the length so we won't be confused. On my chest line, I'm placing one quarter of my bust measurement. I'm adding my seam allowance. On the waist line, I'll place one quarter of my waist measurement. Remember, we are not using that, so I'm only adding the seam allowance. On the hip line, the, that's where the but allocation formula comes in of hip circumference divided by 2 minus 1.5 that's for the front hip line okay so whatever i have on my hip line i will include the same allowance okay and then i'll subtract one inch from what i have there i'll place it on my knee line Okay, so if you're a bit confused, I have a tutorial on how to draft a dartless pencil skirt using the bot allocation. I'll leave the link in the description below so you have a clearer, you know, you have a clearer insight of what we are doing here. Okay, so I'll place the same measurement I have on my knee line on the length of the dress and I'll be connecting the dot. So for the hip line, I forgot to add same allowance. So I'm adding it now. Just ignore the first line we drew, okay? So connecting that, the hip line to the knee line, and then I'll connect my knee line to the length. And that's it for the front bodies. So the next thing, I'll be using my scissors to cut this. So that's what it looks like. I'll be cutting this from the shoulder line the arm cuff so at this point I like to appreciate all my subscribers for always being there and if you're a newbie thanks for stopping by please consider subscribing because I'll be making a lot of style with this pattern okay you won't want to miss that so subscribe and be part of this family So I'm done with the front bodies and this is what it looks like. So the next thing I will cut the back bodies. On my back bodies I have left about 3 inches as my zipper allowance. At this point you will need more room on the back bodies okay? because we'll be adding what we subtracted from the front bodies to the back bodies on the hip line. so on the shoulder line i'll be making the back bodies to be one inch higher and half inch wider at the arm curve so observing that and the next thing i will have to extend the hip line knee line the length all on the back bodies So 
So on the hip line now, we are doing the butt allocation now, and the formula for the back bodies is hip circumference divided by 2 plus 1.5. Remember, we subtracted 1.5 from the front bodies. Okay, so we are adding that back to the to the back bodies because that's where we have the butt. Okay, so when I've marked that and I marked one inch for the seam allowance, for the zipper allowance, I will then go inwards at my knee line with one inch. Okay. So connecting my waistline to the butt allocation we've created there and, and forming my zipper allowance as well, following that same curve. So I will extend it from the waistline to the hip line. I'm talking about the zipper allowance now. I will extend it all the way from the waistline there to my neckline, okay, or the shoulder line one inch i'm using one inch for the zipper allowance at this point so i'll connect going back to the hip line i'll connect my hip line to the knee line the one inch i observe on the knee line and then at the hem there i'm using two inches so i'll just go inward because i want it to be pencil and following this new contour now i'll form one inch now for the slit, I'll be making a normal slit. I'm not doing overlap here. If you want to know how to do overlap, it's still in that video that we did, the that less pencil skirt. Okay, so this is what we have after following that curve and we marked our zipper allowance. And there we have. So the next thing now, I'll just cut this out. So the front bodies is the same thing with the back bodies at the length there. And the side contours will be the same. The difference now is just the butt allocation we have here on the hip line, on the back bodies. And of course, as, as, as a standard, the back bodies for me is always one inch higher at the shoulder line and half inch wider at the arm curve. So I'm just cutting this out and the next thing I would like to show you is the contour I will make at the waistline there on the back bodies. Okay, that's if you don't want your zipper to bulge at the, at the waistline. Okay, so we'll just observe that indentation that we used to observe. For every female, you have a break point there at the back. And then for your zipper to lie flat, you will need to contour that waistline. So that's what I'll be showing you at this point. So now when I'm done cutting, I'll just go in there at the waistline on the back bodies, not the front panel on the back bodies. So I'll go inwards at the waistline. I'll go inwards with one inch. That one inch, I will now slant it to meet my back center line. And then I'll make it to curve towards, you know, to blend with the curve that we have at the butt, at the hip line there. So there it is. And then I'll then connect it to the back center line. Okay, you can connect it as far as the neckline, but back center line is okay. And then I'll blend it to meet the curve that I already have as my butt allocation. Just watch me do it. Okay, so there it is. And then I will use that same, that new line now to create one inch for my zipper allowance. And then I will cut out the excess that I have. This way you, you have the garment set proper on the client's body without any bulge. Okay, it takes care of your zipper at that point because there's a kind of indentation on every female back at that break point. So you need to observe it. If not, you will have excess on your fabric and that's why it bulges. So having that out of the way, I'll just connect this and cut out, cut out the excess. So for the neckline on the back bodies, I'll simply go with the three inches width. You know, the same thing we have on the front bodies. I'll go with three inches width. And I'll go down with about one and a half or two inches depth. 
okay but i won't be cutting this out because like i said i'll be making a lot of styles from this so i can choose to change the necklines okay so feel free to do yours any way you want it and let me know about how you went about it in the comment section at this point if this video adds any value to you at all if you like the content please give me a thumbs up subscribe and share and watch out for the styles that we'll be making with this pattern thank you so much for watching i'll see you